Hey there and welcome to Zeitgeist OG. I am Fat Man and today I am coming at you with another editorial topic on something I've been wanting to discuss for a long time. Today we're going to be talking about diversity and why it sucks. So let's get into diversity for a minute. Diversity can be a really beautiful thing, man. Everybody co-mingling and working together, equal opportunity to go around. There's really only one instance in which diversity doesn't work, and that's when it's crammed down your throat harder than I crammed donuts down mine in the CVS bathroom while I'm supposed to be dieting and my mom is waiting outside. Now, this isn't a new thing, but it's been getting progressively worse. Because instead of making strokes and establishing a movie property or making a pre-established franchise better, all Hollywood is doing is pigment swap or gender swapping a movie franchise. Looking at you, Black Little Mermaid and White Green Lantern. Looking at you. This is an absolutely unhealthy pattern and does the absolute exact opposite of what we're trying to achieve. And without further ado, I'll go into my points on why I think that is. Point number one, definition. For a brief second, let's pretend we're all back in second grade and let's go over the definition of diversity. Being diverse, mixed, variety. No fucking shit. That's why contrary to popular belief, a film like Black Panther is not diverse. And neither is the Ghostbusters reboot. Sorry, not sorry. Hashtag me something. Just because you have all minorities or all women in a role does not diversity make. And that's not even me. That's a fact, Jack. When no one can properly define what makes something diverse or cut context and rush, to define it their own way, things get lost in the shuffle and nobody winds up benefiting anything. In order for something to be truly diverse, it requires a little bit of everything. Having an all black cast or an all female cast doesn't make something diverse. Now, I want to specify, in no way, shape, or form am I saying that that is a bad thing. Movie creators have the right to cast their movies however they want it and choose inclusivity if they want it to be that way. But in our current culture where people are accused of either being racist, misogynistic, or homophobic for not casting a certain way, which is absolutely ridiculous, this plays to a colossal disadvantage for everybody involved. So this brings me into my second point, and that is quality. Seriously, there's nothing more important in film than quality. I don't even know why this needs to be stated, but apparently some people don't get that message. Now, the two films I named previously are gonna be used to springboard this, but really you can apply this to about two dozen films a year at this point. These are simply the first two examples that came to my head. So what's the difference between Black Panther and all female Ghostbusters? Well, for one thing, Black Panther's really good. Go see it. But on a serious note, Black Panther, while not really breaking any new ground for the Marvel community, is beautifully acted, well-written, terrifically choreographed, and all over the place just leaves a really, really solid impression. While not technically diverse, it exemplifies the best traits of every single actor in it and actress, and is allowed to breathe because of the tremendous talent of the cast. But what of Ghostbusters? Well, that's kind of where my next point ties in. I'm personally not a fan of the cast, but I've seen all of them, uh, well, most of them, be super, super talented elsewhere. The problem here is when you strive to diversify something that really doesn't need to be, you do wind up tanking the quality. With Ghostbusters, you have a world that's already been established. You have a world that's already shaped by characters that occupy that universe. The characters have absolutely no room for growth, and they can't have their own experiences because, no matter what, they're always going to be tied to the four people that filled that role before them. Especially, especially when the four leads here are just stripped down versions of their male counterparts, even down to the token black one. And basically this all comes from pushing to change something pre-existing to fill a diversity narrative rather than taking these ladies and creating a new property to have them all dominate. Look at films like Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf, Wolf, or even a personal guilty pleasure of mine, Mean Girls. These movies succeeded in completely different ways, but at their core retained similar qualities for why everything in them worked. Strong characters, great motive for these characters, Development over the course of the film. How rare is that these days? They actually had a purpose and we cared about the outcome in both films. While neither movie offered an exactly fresh idea, they both did something original and creative with that idea. When you're not hampered by the need to feel like you have to do something for diversity's sake, you wind up with a really, really great product. Take something like Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf, which doesn't have an all-female cast, but has the women in the movie 
absolutely steal the role away from everybody else involved. Elizabeth Taylor legitimately gave me chills during this. And that's what you get when you craft a unique role for a woman and just let her fill it and be absolutely amazing in it. And don't just plug her into a whole diversified cast just on the merits that she has a vagina. Trust me, it works letting talent speak. Now, it finally all ties together with the most dangerous bit. Exclusion is never a good thing. That really shouldn't need to be stated, but again, we seem to be having some problems with that these days as well. From all counts, not just one. If you're a decent human being, you would never exclude somebody from something because of the color of their skin. Again, shouldn't need to be stated. But on the other hand, you could be like me and exclude people because they're assholes. Not because they're a white asshole or a black asshole or a Muslim asshole, just an asshole. Judge people by the individual. That's your moral lesson for this video. Now moving on to being a dick. Anyway, it's no secret that women and minorities suffered for a very, very long time in Hollywood, but now we live in a culture where that's almost celebrated, which isn't a bad thing. It's nice that everybody gets to share the playground. A dig. Ironically though, we seem to be taking kind of a step back these days. Nowadays, and by the way, it's about to snow here soon, so your salt is definitely, definitely welcome. If you're guilty of being white in Hollywood, a wrench kind of gets thrown into the whole diversity agenda. And no company on earth exemplifies that more than Disney. Whew, the sweet, sweet irony. So Disney got into some hot water recently for not being able to find enough Middle Eastern people to fill roles in their live action Aladdin reboot. Uh, and honestly, just the fact that they keep doing the live action remakes is insulting without anything else attached to it but I digress. They claimed that out of the 500 extra roles they needed to fill, which included cameramen and stunt people, they found 400 people of Middle Eastern descent to fill those roles. However, Hollywood couldn't accept that number. That was 100 too short and demanded that even though cameramen typically don't appear in movies, that Disney do something about it and make sure everybody there was Middle Eastern. Disney then, and I shit you not, started browning up their white people. That sounds like a weird shit fetish. What the hell is going on? The funniest thing is, is that when Disney got caught doing this, they didn't apologize for that. Disney apologized for not finding enough Middle Eastern people and having to include white people. <clears throat> it was like a little kid being forced to share their toys. Oh man, I didn't wanna, but mom said I have to let the white people play. <sighs> what in the actual hell? Like I said, weren't we offended by this not that long ago? Isn't forcing somebody to paint their face to represent another culture so much worse than just letting that person, who by the way is an extra, is an extra that's not even credited in the movie or somebody that's an electrician on set or operates a camera just be a part of the damn thing as is? Look, and I know white people have done this too, if I gained a pound for every time America whitewashed a Japanese film, I'd... Oh, well, this, this actually looks about right. The point is, putting the shoe on the other foot isn't the answer. I, at this point, feel like we should have moved past all this. Everybody's guilty of something. Nobody's denying any of that. People have been mistreated in the past. But the answer isn't to mistreat people now. Just because we are in a cultural boom and celebration of people and races and all kinds of orientated people getting roles that they were previously barred from doesn't mean we could shame other people for being in them too much at some point. That's fucked up no matter which way you slice it. If the diversity tactic is going to persist, then everybody needs to be able to play and participate. Except for pedophiles and child molesters and rapists. You gotta draw the line somewhere and that's where I draw it. Don't feel bad about that one. That's how we build a bridge and ultimately everybody gets to live a little better. Not by having minorities only fill behind the scenes roles. Not by excluding white people in the name of diversity. And not by letting societal pressure dictate how an end product should or shouldn't look. Look, I know at the end of the day I'm just kind of a fat dork gabbing it up about movies on a YouTube channel. But trust me, I'm not deluded in thinking that the only racial problems exist in film. I know what's out there in a lot of other mediums and pretty much all over the globe. The world's problems may not get solved by fixing the cesspool that is Hollywood, but if there's one thing I know, it's that entertainment really does bring people together. And surely, this would be a start. Also, it might help to not let any more Harvey Weinstein or Bill Cosby types slip through the cracks. Just saying. 
Anyway, I am Fat Man, and thank you for watching. That was my take on diversity in the movie spectrum in Hollywood. Now, please, let me know what you thought. Did you agree, disagree? Do you have a different viewpoint? Do you think I'm just a fat gas bag that's full of crap? Whatever it is, leave it in the comments below. And again, thank you very much for watching.